morning and welcome back to the lecture series on performative gender and religions in South Asia. In this module, we are discussing folk traditions and performances with a reference to uh, you know Chow and Therukutu. Chow that we have been discussing in our uh, uh, since our previous lecture and then we are going to talk about a new uh, folk uh, art form or dance form called Therukutu. So, uh, continuing from our previous lecture, we were talking about Chow. Uh, we see that in the case of Chow, a huge drum called Dhamsa, uh, this drum has been frequently used by the uh, tribal communities, uh, the Santals from the eastern regions uh, very commonly uh, also used by the Chow performers. And uh, Dhamsa is uh, 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 a major in instrument used by all three uh, styles of uh, Chow uh, coming from uh, Purulia, Saraikela and Mayurbhanj. Uh, and this Dhamsa, like I have been saying, you know, it traces uh, its uh, origin among the tribal communities, especially the Santals. Um, and the mention of uh, Dhamsa can be found uh, frequently in the medieval narratives and folk uh, heroic poetry. So, several members of the uh, Saraikela uh, royal family such as the Maharaja's brothers and sons were accomplished dancers of the Saraikela Chow and Maharaja himself uh, is believed to have uh, taken uh, a keen interest in uh, you know the dance form. Uh, such as in the process of suggesting and discussing new themes uh, and also in conceiving uh, the design of the elaborate masks. So, what happens to several uh, you know folk art forms uh, post independence is that the, with the change of the larger uh, you know rule um, the the sponsorship also changes, the future of the dance form changes. Uh, so, post independence of India followed by the merger of the princely states with the federal union and uh, thereby abolition of the princely system, uh, a lot of dance forms were suffering from uncertainty due to lack of uh, you know patronage and uh, there were also some questions regarding the future of the Chow dance form. But the Purulia uh, tradition did not so much suffer, uh, you know, in this regard. It did not feel the crisis of the new uh, transition or new uh, transformation from, you know, the, the shift in power from princely to the federal state. This is because it had always uh, been community based, community centric, and it was patronized and supported not by uh, any royal lineage, but by the common people as a whole. It was a very, uh, uh, it has a very plebeian nature in that sense. So, from the discussion of uh, Chow, now we move on to a new uh, dance form called Therukutu. Therukutu originated from the Vilupuram district in the state of Tamil Nadu in India. It is performed in Tamil Nadu and uh, certain select areas of Sri Lanka. Theru in Tamil uh, means uh, street whereas Kutu uh, refers to uh, drama and it is also known as Kattai Kutu and uh, even uh, Kutu, right. So, uh, the stories that the artists perform are mainly inspired from Ramayana Mahabharata and also from Shivapuram. So, we see the Therukutu comprises of mainly dance, drama, music, uh, prose and poetry and this art form uh, traces its roots uh, during the uh, Sangam period. This art form traces its roots during the Sangam period. Now, Kattai as a word means wood in Tamil. The hero characters, especially the males in a there, Therukutu uh, use this term uh, kate to denote the, uh, the head, the breast, shoulder and uh, the ornamentation as well as uh, the costumes, uh, right. 
and this entire costumes, this entire ornamentation and get up is uh, known as Katte uh, Vesham. Therukutu has gilded crowns and heavy makeup with a family resemblance to Kathakali. Therukutu is uh, almost uh, a sister form of Kathakali. However, Kathakali's uh, base or roots are in classics. It has a classical base and uh, Kathakali uh, you know exudes artistic uh, splendor uh, which is uh, different from Therukutu. Therukutu on the other hand has been confined to the countryside. It is performed uh, uh, usually throughout the night particularly in the post harvest uh, summer months and during uh, festivals and uh, their sites, their performance sites are in the non Brahminical Hindu temples. So, having said that this reminds me of the Jatra form in West Bengal, the Jatra performance uh, also meant for a rural audience, right? Uh, rural audience usually coming from, you know, agro based, uh, you know, societies, uh, agro based backgrounds, uh, agricultural backgrounds. And uh, these performances, we see the uh, folk performances are usually, uh, you know, practiced throughout the night because uh, the men and women are busy, uh, you know, harvesting and cutting the crops during the daytime. So, this is uh, these forms of uh, folk forms of entertainment for the uh, common masses, their plebeian nature is uh, uh, explained in the fact that they are performed in open fields, in open spaces, in a way from the uh, elite sites and uh, commonly they are uh, performed in the night time, right. And uh, so, they are a breakaway, they are, they have some commonalities, but they are also a departure from the Brahminical traditions. Therukutu features the uh, figure of Kattayakaran. Kattayakaran is the person that performs a slapstick comedy with satirical elements. The Kattayakaram uh, acts as a facilitator that interacts between the mythical world and the real world. It, the the Kattayakaran is more like a go between or a liaison between the uh, cosmic uh, or the otherworldly, the mythical world and the tactile, uh, you know, real world, this worldly. The Kattayakaran uh, blurs the epic distance, uh, you know, through uh, laughter and ridicule. So, as the Kattayakaran is commenting uh, satirically or ridiculously on a topic, uh, the sense of identification uh, between the audience and the performer is uh, complete. The audience does not feel distanciated from the performer. There is a, an immediate, uh, you know, relating with the performance and the performer. The performance of Therukutu is generally treated uh, disparagingly by the urban elites, right? Uh, the reason for this, uh, you know, belittling treatment uh, is owing to the theatre's historical development as has been uh, cited with some degree of reluctance by the uh, hereditary performers. The fact that this practice, the art form of uh, Therukutu traces to the Vanar or washerman lineage of performers. So, basically because it has come from a community that is not understood as uh, uh, you know a, an elite class uh, or upper class uh, people that this dance form is uh, not seen or, or treated with high regard by the urban elites. The negative implications are associated with the low status of the uh, Tamil stage from uh, which this theatre tradition originates. Like I said, uh, it, it, it has its provenance uh, going back to the washerman uh, community, right, who are not held uh, as very high people uh, in the eyes of the urban elites. 
So, the urban elites uh, negative perception of uh, the professional performers both male and female uh, influenced by social reform movements. So, the urban elites uh, negative perception of professional performers be it the male or the female uh, you know is influenced by social reform movements uh, which include the anti notch or anti devdasi movement during the 1930s and the 1940s. Uh, the so called progressive opinion emphasized uh, you know or, or uh, sidelined these performances mainly owing to their bodily excesses. So, why were these uh, dance forms looked down upon? Uh, the reason cited uh, was the presence of bodily excesses which were seen as vulgar. For example, uh, prostitution. Uh, it, it would uh, these uh, you know performances were seen as body as uh, as uh, lewd right um, and uh, the so the urban elites would believe that uh, these uh, traditional backward customs and lifestyles uh, were associated with and insinuated uh, prostitutions they were the bodily excesses uh, you know suggested in these dance forms uh, would uh, very smoothly transition a performer into uh, the trade of prostitution. Now, we also have to understand in the context of anti notch or anti devdasi movement uh, during the colonial period during social reforms, uh, we have to understand that this is the western eye, this is the eye of the British colonizer that is defining these uh, time immemorial or very old uh, you know folk dance forms. It is the standard or the parameter of the uh, you know shaped or, or defined by the western eye that uh, defines what is vulgar and what is not. Uh, even uh, you know as an extension of this uh, discussion I, I would very quickly mention how you know uh, as a result of uh, the colonizers, uh, uh, you know, so called social reforms or the colonizers' uh, perception, even uh, a very rich uh, uh, practice or tradition such as the, 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 the Tawaif's tradition, the different gharanas of Tawaif's have been all moody, um, have been the different gharanas of uh, Tawaif's, the Tawaif uh, tradition which is a very rich tradition in India uh, and they have their own gharanas or lineages, they have been reduced to prostitution. Uh, so, it is the western perception that make uh, you know these Indian very old Indian uh, practices as uh, something very reductive. So, tawaif is not the same as a prostitute, a tawaif is uh, not only uh, you know involved in flesh trade, she is a, a very accomplished artist and performer uh, who is participating in public uh, you know uh, circles at par with the male participants. So, she is a, a very talented individual also it, it needs a, a rigorous training just like in other dance uh, forms uh, to become a, uh, an accomplished uh, 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 you know an established the wife, but uh, with the passage of time during the colonial period these perceptions uh, very quick uh, you know understandings or, or very quick uh, um, kind of labels were uh, very precipitous uh, or, or let us say very uh, you know reductive labels very uh, off handed uh, you know tagging or labels were associated with uh, certain dance forms just because they could not be uh, translated, uh, the cultural translation was not uh, very easy from uh, the Indian culture, from the Indian tradition to the uh, uh, to what the uh, British carried with them, the, the British perception. This is owing to the uh, cultural impediment and uh, the difficulty to translate one culture. Uh, through the lens of the other that uh, often times the, uh, the tawaif has been uh, you know reduced from being uh, 
uh, a, a connoisseur of art or uh, art forms to merely a flesh trader. So, coming back to Therukutu, similar uh, you know uh, perceptions uh, feed one's understanding, the, the western eyes understanding of a form like Therukutu, which has uh, you know often times uh, treated an artist uh, uh, at par with the or, or uh, which has uh, often times treated the artist as a prostitute or seen an artist as a very quickly and smoothly transitioning into prostitution. So, Kate Kutu performers are uh, appreciated for their profession and their individual artistic contributions rather than uh, in the creation of a Tamil uh, national theatre rather than being uh, associated with the national theatre or the classical uh, you know uh, the, the, the glorious uh, and uh, elevated uh, classical heritage, they are appreciated for their individual uh, artistic contributions. Therukutu uh, actors participate in the general festivities connected with the uh, you know the moral message uh, of victory of the good over the evil. The days of the festival are determined according to astrological certain astrological calculations and so 11 consecutive days are set aside for the performance of the entire Mahabharata, the uh, you know uh, the rendition of the entire Mahabharata through bodily uh, enactment uh, which takes consecutive 11 days and uh, on each night we see a new story is being narrated. The performance takes place in acting area that faces the shrine of the chief deity of uh, a small village temple. Uh, before each performance, the Brahmin priests parade through the streets carrying on their heads certain uh, deities, idols. It could be a Shiva, a Kali or even the uh, idol of Draupadi. Temple musicians accompany this procession or parading uh, and only when the priests return to the temple and uh, reinstall the deities in the sanctum sanctorum may the performance of uh, Therukutu begin, right. So, the Brahmin is also not completely uh, you know uh, invisibilized or, or uh, excluded from a folk form such as Therukutu. Uh, we see that in an Indian society as I have been uh, you know mentioning in my previous lecture to the folk and the classical traditions and trends uh, constantly speak to each other, draw on one another and they uh, exchange uh, a lot of elements, right. So, in the case of Thorukutu, a giant clay effigy of Duryodhana who is a character in Mahabharata embodied as a force of evil is uh, painted. So, we see that the deities of the temple as well as the effigies of the Pandavas or the five uh, brothers uh, as well as their common wife Draupadi are covered with uh, flower garlands and they are paraded to the playing arena to witness the event, right. So, when uh, you know performers are dressing up as Pandava and uh, as uh, Draupadi, it is as though it is assumed that these you know mythical uh, or mythological uh, figures, characters are witnessing the performance of Therukutu. There is an exchange of cosmic and mundane uh, platform and it has always been like that. It is believed that the gods descend when uh, an artist performs the uh, mythical figures witness uh, a performance when it is done, when it is you know enacted in the correct manner, when it is done in the correct manner. So, performance in the Indic context, in the South Asian context has its religious connotation, religion and performance cannot be decoupled, right. And this is heightened with the bhakti of the people, the devotion, the dedication of the common masses 
who do not, uh, who no longer see this milieu as you know something that is man made. They do not see the artists as themselves for who they are. They see the artists ad, as gods and goddesses, as mythical figures. They also start worshipping uh, the persona or, or the character that these artists play. So, the place of performance is always considered as sacred and uh, in fact, the ground where the artists perform is ritually cleansed of its impurities through uh, symbolic gestures. It, in effect, it becomes a magic circle. So, the way a ground and arena for Therukutu is cleaned is uh, meant to uh, prevent that uh, space from any evil or negative intrusion. So, no force, no negative force can disrupt the performance. The stories are acted annually in connection with religious celebrations and show a conscious desire among the participants to reinforce commonly held uh, beliefs. Right? And this is something we are going to come back to when we discuss uh, Ram Leela, a very popular performance in the northern part of India. So, with every year's you know repeated performances and the audience also engrossed in them, these uh, beliefs, these myths are embedded in the collective consciousness, in the uh, popular consciousness. Uh, and uh, they are so plebeian in nature, uh, they cannot be, the, the uh, society cannot be kind of uh, dissociated from these beliefs, these very ancient myths and beliefs. The society is in fact shaped, the society's values are shaped by these beliefs. And with uh, every year's religious celebrations, uh, these commonly held beliefs are further, uh, you know, deeply entrenched, deeply embedded in the uh, social memory in the collective memory, collective uh, consciousness of the people. Uh, so, the faith of the people, the bhakti of the people emerges from this commonly held beliefs. The artists through uh, oblation, fasting, prayer and on the other hand, the spectators through this faith in the reality of these characters being portrayed. Uh, enter a state of exaltation. So, this theater becomes something sacred. This, the space of enactment of performance does not remain something man-made. After a point, it uh, you know takes on an elevated uh, form and expression where the audience has uh, his uh, you know entire faith in what he is witnessing. He is not witnessing artists, but mythical characters. Similarly, the actors also undergo, you know, all those uh, exercises preceding the performance such as, you know, uh, cleansing the body through oblation and a following of uh, fasting and sometimes even, even you know, uh, uh, abstinence uh, from any material excess. It could be erotic uh, involvement, sexual involvement. They are, so, they are uh, kind of undergoing some austere practices and, and they are also performing uh, prayers. So, the artists uh, also have to undergo certain practices preceding the performance. Uh, they are cleansing their body through ablation, they are undergoing fasting, they are praying, they are uh, abstaining from, uh, you know, uh, sexuality and so there is a lot of austerity involved with developing the mood and the mindset that an artist has to uh, acquire for performing a certain role. And finally, the religious rituals represent an elaborate cosmic form of play. It, it goes on to become something from profane or mundane to something uh, divine and cosmic, something sacred and otherworldly. The performance space of Therukutu is a square open air area uh, approximately 15 feet uh, on each side. The audience sits on the ground uh, closely packed on the three sides of this arena and uh, expanding uh, you know outward 
in three directions. So, large number of people and the open air space, the vocal projection and a uh, very high pitch musical performer, performance, uh, all these combined together uh, make the use of microphone as unnecessary. A microphone is not required. Everyone is so engrossed, riveted and involved, constantly engaging with the performance that uh, uh, an, an artificial amplifier is not required, right? Uh, even without a microphone, uh, the immediacy of the audience uh, performer relationship can be felt. The connection between the audience and the performer is very strong and it is, uh, you know, it is immediately uh, felt, it is uh, uh, very, uh, very much present, right? Uh, the Therikoto performance space has uh, two divisions. One is a front in which the acting takes place and then the rear area in which a, a four or five member orchestra or chorus team is located. So, the front area takes up uh, three quarters of the total space. The most uh, important basic uh, fa you know, facial colors used in Therikoto are uh, red, green and rose. Red usually implying, uh, you know, an inherently evil, vicious and powerful character. Uh, one of the e typical examples of a character with a red uh, basic makeup would be the uh, Aduryodhana or a Dushashana. So, uh, according to the Therukutu interpretation of a Mahabharata epic, these characters uh, are embodiment of evil. On the other hand, the color green indicates heroism, beneficence and morality uh, as well as power and strength. So, a character like Arjun who is considered as the most valorous of all the Pandavas, uh, all the Pandava princes as well as uh, Bhima who is a, a very powerful, uh, you know, hero, they have their basic uh, facial color as green during the performance. So, the color of rose indicates a character that cannot be definitively categorized within the Therukutu's conceptions of morality and uh, thereby uh, color. So, it is neither completely evil nor completely good. For example, the character of Dharmaraj uh, Yudhishthir uh, who has all the traits of a heroic prince and yet he is taking um, certain actions, he is taking certain decisions uh, as a result of which, uh, you know, uh, a lot of harm is caused. So, uh, as a result of the dice game, uh, a lot of people are harmed. So, his decisions are not uh, really uh, beneficial at large in many ways. Uh, so, the central elements in conventional Therukutu costumes are uh, the crowns and the body ornaments. Since most of the male and female characters are uh, connected with the royal families in these narratives, they wear the crowns uh, as well as other head and shoulder ornaments. These are made mainly of wood colored glass and colored foils. I am going to start my lecture here today. Thank you.